Hi guys, Drew here from Red Beard's Workshop, and welcome to another art video. Now, I was trying to think of what are some new things that I can do for the channel that I haven't done yet, um, and I thought I would get back to trying something I haven't done in three or four years, which is clay sculpting. Now, I got into this uh, several years ago just as a fun hobby. At the time, I had just started doing wood carving, and then a year later, I began trying oil painting. And then a year after that, I thought, you know what, I don't have enough hobbies, let's try something else. And I tried my hand at polymer clay sculpting. Um, I made some cool things during that time, like this uh, dwarven kind of warrior here, uh, with kind of his little bear pelt stuff and his little ram skull armor there. Um, I really enjoyed doing it. I wasn't the best sometimes, you guys, you can tell by this um, Jack from Jack and Daxter. Not the most talented uh, clay sculptor out there, but I still had fun with it. Now, for those of you who aren't super familiar with D&D &D and you're not sure what a dice jail is, basically it's a cute little fun thing. Uh, for those of us who are dice goblins and believe that die have mojo to them. Mojo. 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 If one of your dice is rolling particularly low for a number of rolls in a night, it has some bad mood, like voodoo or muju with it, and you want to just retire that one for the evening. Now, just putting it back in your bag isn't the best idea, because for those of us insane enough to believe in die magic, putting that bad mojo in with the rest of your dice isn't a good idea. You gotta let it cool down a bit first. So for that reason, a lot of players and dungeon masters created what is called a dice jail. What that means is it's just a small little contraption. It could be a cup, it could be a bowl, it could be something simple and you just toss that die in there for the rest of the evening and let it cool down. Now I've seen a lot of really cool people make some, some custom made dice jails, whether with 3D printers or by using other materials and sculpting on top of it. And I was a little bummed out. I don't have a dice jail. But I could make one. <laughs> I spend too much time alone. <coughs> Sorry about that. But I could make one. <laughs> so I thought, uh, wouldn't it be really cool to combine kind of a wooden container and some clay, get back into clay sculpting, and make some kind of cool fantasy looking uh, dice jail, whether that's uh, actually looks like a prison of some kind with bars and stonework or whether I make it look like some sort of fantasy inspired fey realm sort of thing. I've seen a lot of people make these on Etsy and all over the internet where they make their dice jail look like a mimic. So some type of container that when you open it up has the gums, has the teeth, has the eyes and you're tossing your die into a mimic jail for the night. That sort of thing is really cool uh, so I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to brainstorm some other ideas, but this is what I know for sure. Ordering minis, uh, sometimes they come in these fun little wooden boxes when I order custom minis off of Etsy. So I thought this sort of thing would work for a dice jail, and it's one size. So I thought, well, give, I, wish, I should give myself some other options. Give myself some other, you know, opportunities to do some other stuff. So, you know, get some other boxes, you know. So me, I want the Michaels, the art store, you know. And I got myself like a little circular box kind of thing. I'm going to stop doing that. I, I don't know. That's offensive. Um, yeah, so I got a circular uh, box here. It does have like a little magnet, little circle magnet things there, which is kind of neat. And it's got little cheap hinges. The wooden things you get from Michael's, the hinge work is, is shoddy. Uh, um, and it's cheap wood for the most part. Um, so I have the circular one. And I've got this very classic style treasure chest looking box as well. Now this one is a little bit thicker. It costs a little bit more, but the wood's a little bit more solid and better quality. Even the uh, the locking thing here is a little bit better and the hinges are a little bit more solid. So I'm gonna brainstorm and come up with different ideas of how I'm gonna design and decorate these either dice boxes or dice jails. With that in mind, I've decided to try something I also haven't done ever before, which is get some air drying clay. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah! So follow along for more madness. You're going to be a prison. You're going to be a jail. So are you. 
You're all going to be prisons! <laughs> Get on with it! Um, this one here, the larger one, uh, it's probably going to be the most detailed, the most involved, and the longest piece to do. So I really wish I had an idea for this one already, but I don't. Um, the only idea I did have that I thought would be really cool is to actually break parts of the wood uh, around it and then have like clay sculpted tentacles coming out like a kraken or an octopus or something that's like inside the chest and maybe have like an eye breaking out of like a broken piece of wood or something. What I do know is that I have decided for one thing, I'm going to first do the tiny little box that I got for some uh, miniatures that I ordered on Etsy. So for this small box, what I thought would be really cool is to turn this into a leather book. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take some leather and I'm going to cut out enough that it will kind of wrap around here, almost like a, like a leather book covering.
the reason I added some some greens and some blues and everything to our uh, our treasure chest, which we already stained uh, twice to get the right color, was because I wanted to show that you know while this chest is sitting underwater, maybe some algae is growing on it, maybe some other kind of plant growth is beginning to take over or settle on it. So I just wanted to add a subtle um, combination of some blue and green, you know, washes and dry brushes to it, just to give it a little bit more character. Now the next stage is going to be creating the creature that's going to fit inside of it. Uh, the entire reason we broke holes in the sides here, uh, in the front, in there, is because there's a creature kind of living inside this chest. So when we open it to deposit our, our nasty, unfaithful die into our dice jail, there's going to be a creature waiting inside here. Now, I mean, I've gone back and forth. I spent days, weeks struggling, trying to figure out what am I going to put in here? What's going to be the main feature of this chest? Um, and I still don't know, honestly, <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been going back and forth on a few designs. At one point I thought eels, at another point I thought maybe like a small baby sea dragon. Um, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm being too clever for my own good. I need to just like settle on something that's, you know, just kind of simple and easy enough to do. So I'm going to create a type of kraken like creature in here. So what we're going to do is have some like tendrils or tentacles coming out the sides here. Um, maybe we might even... Yeah, I'm not sure. Obviously, we we you know we would like to have multiple. We're not going to have enough to to you know. I'm not going to go breaking more holes in here. Um. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna create this out of uh, clay. Now, typically, I've only ever used polymer clay, and for polymer clay, you actually have to bake it in the oven. I don't want to bake this entire thing in the oven, obviously, because it's made of wood. The wood can warp. It can burn. Uh, the paint fumes cooking isn't really great. So we're not going to do that. So instead, I bought something that I've never used before, which is air drying clay. Got this from my local Michaels. Um, I've watched a few videos. I've seen the way people have done it. Um, but this is new to me. And if you watch my other videos, um, you know I haven't done clay sculpting on the channel yet. Uh, in my thank you for 100 subscribers videos, I did mention that I used to do clay sculpting a lot in my old apartment. But it's been a long time since I've done that. Probably uh, two to three years. So I've got my clay sculpting tools here in my uh, amazing mug. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, I've got my tools here. Um, so the first step to doing that is we create an armature. And we do that with uh, kind of sculpting wire, floral wire, whatever you want to call it. You basically create the skeleton of whatever you're going to be uh, creating. Um, you then use tin foil to bulk it out. Uh, the, you want to make the majority of your sculpture wire and tin foil. A lot of people may not know that just by looking at clay sculptures, um, for at least for smaller items. Uh, for, for the reason being is, uh, first of all, you can't have your clay too thick when it dries or else it's going to crack. That's the same thing with baking polymer clay. They recommend you only have it about a quarter of an inch thick. Otherwise, it is going to break. Um, so in my experience using polymer clay, I've used this handy-dandy pasta maker here, which is great. Um, oh, I didn't think that through. I'll have to move this. It used to come with a little handy clamp that would clamp down to the table, but when I moved, I don't know where I put it. So I was like, oh, I'll just use one of, one of my clamps here. Um, oh, there you go. I moved it. It fits now. So anyway, yeah, you get it to the right thickness setting you want. You run your clay through there a couple times. That makes it easy to work with and easy to sculpt. It also makes it uh, the right thickness to attach to your armature that you've created. So I busted this out for the first time in years, cleaned it off. So right now we're going to create the armature for, I would say at least for now, for uh, kind of a main basic shape to go in the center and for the arms. Uh, we'll have that sit inside of the chest. Uh, and then you can work on clay sculptures uh, for a couple days before it really hardens and becomes difficult to work with. Uh, one of the ways you keep it from hardening too much is to put a wet paper towel over top of your sculpture and then cover that all in plastic. So while we're working on the sculpture, we're probably going to be doing that during the stages. Um, but today, my plan for the evening is to just get the main bulk of the uh, base of the creature inside here and something for the two tentacles that we're going to have showing coming out. It's going to be challenging to make sure everything fits when this is closed. Um, so we're going to start small with little bits and then add on and build onto it later on. So stick along.
right, so I'm a dum dum, and sadly my phone died as I was applying the tin foil to the armature. So this is kind of the basic shape we have right now of this creature, which uh, once we apply the clay, we'll have to. We're basically going to have to very carefully get that arm in. <laughs> but once we do it, everything should be good. Speaking English, difficult. All right, so we've got our basic uh, tin foil wrapped around here. So it's kind of the bulked out tentacles for the side um and then we can always add layers on add details and sculpt on top of it what i want is kind of like a circular mouth filled with uh teeth kind of sticking up and then maybe even have a space in the center where i can just put the dice right in there um what i plan on doing as well is putting like a small uh layer in here uh where we're going to paint it gold and have it look like gold coins in fact i even have some Dungeons and Dragons themed coins that I bought online. Um, they're pretty cool. So I might even use some of these, toss them down in the center, maybe make sure you can see them through all of the, uh, the cracks and holes in there. Um, and then this will sit on top of it uh, kind of nicely. I thought about pouring some resin in there with some blue to make it look like kind of like some water in there but i realized i broke the holes way too low and if i do that um it's gonna spill out everywhere and that's not cool so anyway this is the armature of what we got so far we're gonna start applying some clay to it next That's what we're looking at to start the inside. The creature would sit in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry separately. Uh, and then we're going to work on that for now. get the idea I'm gonna continue on finishing up putting on the base layer and then we'll come back uh, with the next kind of session of work once some of this is dried off thanks
So we've been on quite a journey so far making this thing, and we're getting close. Um, I am at the point now where we have our creature inside the uh, treasure chest here. Uh, we have space right inside the mouth where a D20 fits perfectly, or any other die that we need to keep inside the maw of the little Charybdis in here. Um, the last thing I wanted to do is create a base for it, uh, put some coral reef and some plantation around it. Unfortunately, we just have one problem. I don't like it. It's just not good. I don't like it. Um, I'm not the best clay sculptor. Uh, this is the first time I've worked with this particular clay and the first time I've sculpted in a couple years. And uh, I just really don't like it that much. Now, when I just had the gold inside the chest originally, I was like, man, this looks really cool. I'm excited about it. And to be completely fair, the sculpture doesn't look great to me inside the chest, but on its own, it's not bad. And the creature would actually be the perfect size for the uh, terrain ship that I created out of XPS foam here, the pirate ship, uh, which I will be at some point making a second ship on a video. But this would be the perfect size to have in the water uh, when my players ever sail on the ship and they encounter some sea creatures. Um, that would also give me the opportunity to create just uh, other individual tentacles that I could place around the ship for the creature itself. Um, it's the perfect size for that, and to be completely honest, in hindsight, I much would have rather just made this a separate thing and just made this into a treasure chest and just literally made it an underwater treasure chest where I could put my, my dice in. I think when it comes to artwork, it's definitely okay to admit, you know what, I screwed this up. Sometimes not every project goes well. Sometimes things don't happen exactly the way you would imagine them in your mind. And uh, I think it's important to show the ones that you're not super excited about to show that, hey, everyone's got a bad day and a good day and that's okay. I equally think it's important to be able to look at something and think, you know what, this could be better. Let's take a chance and try to change it. Maybe I can make something else out of it. So I really like the idea of turning this sort of what I would consider to be a failed project into two successful projects. So what I'm going to attempt to do is pry this creature that I super glued in the, into this chest out of it so that I can create a, a miniature for D&D &D out of it and then do something else with the chest. So bear with me. Looky, looky, I did a thing. Uh, I got my little crib disc out of there because we are going to turn this into a miniature for D&D &D for ocean encounters. Um, changed my mind completely. Unfortunately, it did bring up a chunk of the gold beneath it, which lies sundered here. So now we're going to go back to our clay. We're going to lay some more down here uh, to fill in that space, maybe even make some, some mounds. And I've got some stuff that we're going to add in here. At the dollar store, I found uh, some like little gemstones here, different colors. Uh, got some blue ones as well. So as long as they're at the right angle, it won't show the stuff on the bottom and it'll just look like colorful gemstones. I've also got some stuff from another project here. Uh, some other little crystals we can toss in there. I've got a lot more of these gold coins as well. So we got some fun stuff to play with. I got some seaweed looking material here that we can add in. So overall, we're going to turn this treasure chest into something really cool looking that we can be happy with and just finish this off. So bear with me as we touch up the last little bits. Oh, blow the man down, goodies, blow the man down. Yeah. 
Also plan on spraying down a coat of sealing, a sealant over top of the actual treasure chest itself once the super glue dries. That way, it'll keep that moss type material on top um, from actually like falling off or drying or fraying away. It'll kind of keep it a little bit more solid and attached to the chest uh, lid. What's up everyone? I finally finished it. We finally finished our underwater treasure chest dice box. I'm so happy it's finally done. Whew. This, I am nothing if not consistently inconsistent. I started this project like literally four weeks ago. Four weeks! And then I was doing other things. I was filming gameplay for my video game review channel. I was doing other art projects and like 
I had like artist block, like the writer version, <laughs> writer's block, but like the artist version. I couldn't figure out what I was going to do. And then I was like, oh, I'm set on making a base for it, but I don't know what I wanted to do for the base. So I ended up going to, you know, a pet store and buying some like aquarium stuff to put onto it. It just, it took me forever to get this done, but thankfully we did get it done. And I'm thankful to all of you for sticking with me and waiting for me to finally finish this damn thing. Um, but I'm so happy with this. This is awesome. Like, this is a dice jail that I'm going to be proud to, like, bring out when I'm playing in my games with everyone. You know, banish the dice to the depths and, and toss it in an tre underwater treasure chest. Um, I think this is really cool. This is one of my favorite things that I've made. I know the video is really long, and I, I wanted to show people kind of like how you can take something that seems broken in your head and find a way to make it work. Uh, so when I finally make another terrain ship in that episode, we're also going to create the other tentacles and parts of that little cryptus creature and we'll show how in scale that's going to work for a perfect miniature for like open sea battles and D&D &D games. I also made this fun little thing, made a little spell spell book kind of uh, case for the dice. Um, I was going to do something to make this all look like paper on the outside and I did have a lock here. But I took it off because I was going to cover this all with clay and then carve the clay to make it look like paper. Um, but then I don't know what I did with the lock. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do for this. But at least for now, it's like a fun little kind of spell book case thing for dice. I don't know. I'll figure something out with it. That wasn't the important part of the project. The important part was our underwater dice jail. So I'm so happy to finish this. Um, quick announcement. To everybody who watched my thank you for my 100 subscriber video, I have uh, tallied the messages that I got from people, uh, the text messages I got from friends, the Facebook comments, and the YouTube comments, and the grand winner is the woodcarved pipe. So my next project that I'm going to be working on, that's also going to be quite a long project, so who knows if I'll put other videos out in between now and then, but I am going to be making my acorn and oak leaf uh, wood carved uh, tobacco pipe for my next project. So thank you guys for sticking with this very long video. I appreciate each and every single one of you who take the time to watch my videos, and we will see you next time on Redbeard's Workshop. Mm -hmm.